Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Diane Desiel and today I'm showing you how to assemble the shape waistband that I show you in my last video. I did cut my short that I did in my last video and I will show you how to assemble the complete short with the waistband. Here all the pieces have been cut double except for the two fly piece. And the first step will be to overlock part of them. Here you could see I did my overlock on both center front crutch. I also overlocked two sides of the fold or the wider fly piece and the round side of the small fly piece. Now for the sewing, we're going to do a few preparation steps and the first one would be to sew your front crutch together so face to face you're going to start with a back tack at the notch and sew with your seam allowance until about two centimeter from the end of your seam the other thing i'm going to do is to sew my dart on both back Now you could see that I did all my seams, so center front seam with the back tack at the beginning, finishing two cm before the end. I also did my dart and I pressed them back of the dart towards the center or the crotch. I did an extra preparation seam. I attached my zipper to the big fly piece. And remember that this is for women's side. If you're doing a men's pant, you would put your zipper on the other side. Now for the next step, we're going to do the fly. So you're going to take your small fly piece and sew it onto your front. In that case, for women's size, I'm going to assemble my small piece face to face with my left side. To do that, you're going to have to open because you want to grab only the left side. So open the crotch that you sew and you're going to sew it all the way down with your normal seam allowance. When it's done, you flip it and you're going to do a little under stitch on the fly with all the seam allowance. Now I forgot to mention when we did the first step for the fly piece, when you assemble the zipper to the big fly piece, you should place your zipper right next to the overlock to move it about three millimeter. Now the next step is going to be to sew this piece to the right side of the pant. So you're going to place it face to face with the right side and assemble only one side of the crotch to the fly piece and place your front right over the zipper and you're going to sew at seven millimeter from the edge of your front pant. You sew all the way down and when you're done, you could flip and understitch on the garment at one millimeter from the fold. Now you see that my second fly piece is attached to my right side and I hope you noticed that I did open my zipper to do my first seam at 0.7 and pretty much at three quarter distance, I put the needle down and I raise back my zipper to finish my seam. I use my half foot so I could go at the proper distance from the teeth. Now for the second seam or the top stitch, I use the narrow foot so I could do the top stitch all the way down. The little difference in the seam allowance, you do have a 1 cm here, but we only use 0.7 to assemble. This is giving you a tiny little underlap that you could see better over here. And this way, when the fly is complete, it makes sure that you're not going to see the tape or the zipper at all. You're going to overlap the left side over the right one, parallel all the way. You could place a pin. And the next step is going to be to attach the zipper to the small piece. 
So you, I lift my front and I'm gonna go grab only two layers, the zipper and the tiny fly, and you're going to sew them together all the way down. When that seam is done, we're ready for the last zipper seam, the top stitch. The top stitch is to attach the left front with the small fly piece. So still in position like that, you're going to hold these two layers, small fly piece and the left side, flip the other fly piece to make sure you're not gonna grab it, and you're going to do your top stitch from the top all the way to the center front. You could follow the shape of that small fly piece, so round over here until center front. Now your zipper or your fly is finished. You would be missing one little tack to hold the small piece with the larger piece or the double piece. And you could tack it from the inside just like that or do a little tack on the top on all layers. Now we'll be able to do the assembling of the short. So I'm going to take my back and put it right side with right side with my front. I'm going to sew the side seam top to the bottom. And since I'm going to do closed seam, I'm also going to overlock. I'm going to do that for both side seam. Then I'm going to assemble the inseam of the short, the front with the back at the inseam in a straight line, top to the bottom, and I'm also going to overlock. Now you could see my side seam are done and overlock and also my inseam. And I guess now you understand why I didn't go all the way, but I finished two centimeters before when I did my first seam, the front crutch. It was to be able to do that inseam with the back and the front together. Now we're ready to do the last seam, the back crutch. So I'm going to place both of them face to face I usually put one leg inside the other to facilitate the manipulation and you're going to start your seam maybe a centimeter or two before the end of your seam, the crotch seam in the front. When you get to the inseam intersection, send one seam allowance in one direction and the other one in the opposite direction. This way your seam will be centered very easily and you distribute the thickness. So you're going to sew like that, then you could do your overlock to have a closed seam. Now my crutch is sewn, so we're now ready to do the waistband. First, if you're using heavy denim or cotton, you might do your waistband without putting fusible. But if you do any other fabric, you should fuse every single piece. Now, if you decide to do the inside and outside of your waistband in the same fabric, you don't have to worry about anything right now. But if you decide to do the inside of the waistband with another fabric, like I'm going to do right now, you're gonna have to be careful to cut the right side. So you should do it right away on your pattern. I did turn my short on the right side and I'm going to check with my pattern. So I have to flip my pattern and this is going to be cut one time in fabric on that side and turn the pattern and one time on the other side for the inside of the waistband. And the same thing for this one with the extension self fabric cut one time and the inside I turn it around cut one time also. The back piece is symmetrical so it doesn't matter. Now the first seam that we're going to do for the waistband is to put it back in one piece. You do have your notch for the side seam. It's going to be easy to sew them together inside and outside. You're going to put your side seam matching the notch right side with right side, right side with right side, right side with right side, matching the notch and right side with right side matching the notch. You do your normal seam for a time and then you press your seam open.
once your inside piece and outside piece are sewn together and press open you could do the next seam that is going to be to assemble them together so the smallest curve one side to the other when it's done you're going to open your piece and do your under stitch on the inside piece at one millimeter from the seam grabbing all the seam allowance when you're done we're going to do the seam allowance finishing on the inside part of the waistband only you could do overlock i will do bias finishing Now we have the waistband in one piece because we assemble, we did the under stitch in the inside part and the seam allowance finishing at the bottom. You're going to press that top seam, make sure the inside fabric stay inside and of course the under stitch will help you doing that. So you do a nice pressing and we're ready to assemble with the short. Take the self fabric that you're going to put face to face with your short and you start keeping one centimeter outside. This is your seam allowance. You're going to sew all around and finish on the other side the same way. This side you have the extension but the waistband also have the extension so the knot should be right at center front and give you a centimeter coming out for your seam allowance. Now the waistband is sewn, we have two more little steps to do. We have to close both sides of the waistband, then we have to attach the inside to the outside. First we'll do the corner, both corners are done the same way. Fold the inside face to face with the outside. Look at my seam allowance going down here. The seam allowance of the waist remain going up. Place it like that and you're going to fold also the seam allowance of the inside part. You could do it diagonal like that and you just have to sew your corner in a straight line. Make sure you're accurate using the center front as your guide so you don't go over or smaller. Exactly at center front you do your two little seam. Now the corners are sewn, we're going to turn them, send all seam allowance in the same direction and just turn both corners. And before doing the last seam, I'm going to ask you to pin, but not the seam itself. I want you to pin the middle of the waistband like that, because here is the major uh, problem we have when we do that seam. Very often we do create diagonal line. So I want to make sure that I have no diagonal line and that both layers are even. When you finish pinning, you make sure that your seam allowance is going up and your inside of waistband is going down and you're going to do a stitch in the ditch, so right in the seam. When you do it, if you don't have the special foot, just pull a little bit to open the seam then when you release it and ready to press, it's going to create a little pleat and hide the seam that you just did. Now here is the result. You could remove your pin and you'll see that the inside of the waistband is attached. My stitch in the ditch that you could see if I'm pulling but with a little pressing is going to just disappear especially if it's in the same color thread as the fabric. Now if you're having a hard time with the stitch in the ditch and you don't have the foot you could also decide to do a little top stitch instead all around your waistband. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and I see you next time.